Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Mike. There's no Teresa with me today. The tranquil spa town of Cheltenham, located close to the Cotswolds, famous for its festivals and horse racing. Not somewhere you'd expect to have links with the notorious serial killer, Jack the Ripper. So this book by Tom Sleeman and Keith Andrews identify Cheltenham-born man as Jack the Ripper. And he's located in Cheltenham Cemetery. So why don't you come with me as I try and locate the gravestone of Jack the Ripper. So while I'm searching for this grave, why don't we have a reminder about the serial killer, Jack the Ripper and his victims. Jack the Ripper was an English serial killer who between August and November of 1888 murdered at least five women in or near the Whitechapel district of London's East End. An overcrowded area accounting for a quarter of a million residents, many living in extreme poverty. There are five generally accepted victims of Jack the Ripper and are often referred to as the canonical five each victim's throat was cut and the bodies mutilated in some manner. Mary Ann Nichols was the first Ripper victim. She was approximately 44 years old at the time of her demise. Annie Chapman was his second victim. She was a 47-year-old widow and alcoholic. Elizabeth Strike, a 45-year-old whose body was found at 1am in Dutfield's yard with suspicion the Ripper was disturbed because not long later, the body of Catherine Eddowes, a 46-year-old woman with kidney disease, was found in Mitre Square at 1.45 a.m. Mary Jane Kelly, unlike the victims that preceded her, Kelly was young at 25 years old and considered attractive. When found, she'd been virtually skinned to the bone, and many experts believe that she was Jack the Ripper's final victim. I believe how many gravestones are here. I noted these gravestones of the Australian Army. I have since found out that there are 109 First World War graves that are mainly men who died in local voluntary hospitals. I've come across several of these types of tombs. It's not the one I'm looking for. It just reminds me of the Whipping Angels from Doctor Who. Scary. Well, I found another one. Another Weeping Angel. This has to be the scariest one yet. I'm not even getting close to this one. Right, over there. Why did I even start this? So I'm not doing this totally in the blind. I do have a photograph of the gravestone. But with all of these gravestones, it doesn't help much. Wait a minute, that looks positive. Oh, you can't believe it. That is it. Wow. I couldn't believe it. I've walked past this headstone twice today. It's not much from this side, really. It's quite a plain gravestone. It doesn't stand out as anything significant. It's probably why I missed it a few times. But still, I found it in the end. Before we reveal the identity of our Cheltenham suspect, let's break down the main theories of Tom Sleeman and Keith Andrews' book. They believe our suspect was a British military officer an archaeologist and trained killer. This accounts for why he was able to kill effectively in the densely populated slums of Whitechapel and avoid being caught. Sir Charles Warren, the Commissioner of Police, was a close friend of our suspect, knowing he was the Ripper, but kept quiet and took his secret with him to the grave. Annie Chapman stole artefacts and rings from the home of our suspect, which had been excavated from King Solomon's temple in Jerusalem. That all the Ripper victims knew each other and had all benefited from these stolen goods. That he left cryptic messages carved on his victims' bodies. And that the Golston Street message was an ancient language that only our suspect knew from working in the Middle East. So who is our suspect? It's Colonel Claude Renier Condor. Born in 1848 in Cheltenham, 
he moved to Hackney, London in the 1860s and served in the Royal Engineers alongside a pre-knighted Charles Warren. They both became famous worldwide for excavating hundreds of sites in the Middle East. So having found his gravestone, would it be possible to find the house he was born in? Absolutely. Searching through Ancestry, we find a register of burials. Through this, we find Claude Condor was born in Tivoli Road. So just behind me is the house that Claude Renier Condor was born in, in 1848. I'm still reading the book, so if you ask me, what are my opinions? The only facts I'm a bit dubious about is whether all of his victims knew each other. I guess the best way to find out is for me to complete the book. Now you too could also read the book and I'll leave a link in the description. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please remember to give us a big old like. If you enjoy watching gruesome videos, we've also got a video about Gloucester Prison. Or if you like documentaries, you could look at the video about my granddad and how Bletchley Park Codebreakers helped save his life. If you want to keep up with our videos, please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button. And we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.